students, welcome to Accounting 1303, Introduction to Accounting 1. Uh, the textbook that we are utilizing is College Accounting, 23rd edition. Um, this is a short presentation dealing with some of the content in Chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 deals with analyzing transactions and the accounting equation. This is a short video on how to solve one of the problems that you have for homework. Um, this is problem or this is exercise 24A. This particular exercise was selected because it allows me to explain both the analysis of the transactions and applying those transactions into the accounting equation. So I'm going to explain this in a short video um, so that way you can have a general idea of how to go ahead and complete your um, assignment. Um, this video does not replace you uh, reading the chapter. You are required to read chapter 2 in its entirety before you attempt any of your assignments. This little short presentation is just supplemental to your reading. That way, if uh, you're a visual learner and you will want to see something like this, um, so you can get an idea of how to uh, perform these transactions and how to record them into the accounting equation, you have this information available. Now, before I jump into the problem, um, I just want to highlight some important information that was presented in this chapter. Um, the first thing I want to go ahead and explain is um, that it is very important that we know the difference between what an asset, a liability, and owner's equity are. These are the three components that make up the accounting equation. Okay? The accounting equation is your assets equals your liabilities plus your equity. Okay? Now let's break these out into each individual components. Assets. Okay? What is an asset? An asset is anything valuable that the business owns and that will provide future benefit. Okay? Anything that the organization that you work for, business, company, whatever you want to call it, owns, it belongs to them, that is an asset. Some examples um, of assets include cash, accounts receivable, inventory, equipment, supplies, any vehicles, tools, land, building. And the list continues. These are just some of the main examples of assets that we can provide to you. Now, um, I'm just going to highlight here, one of the items in our asset section is accounts receivable. Okay? Now this is commonly uh, confused with accounts payable. Okay? And there's a big difference between both. Okay? Accounts receivable is when someone owes you money. So I'm the company, okay? uh, let's say I'm ABC company and you purchase something from me worth $500 from me and you promise to pay at a future point in time. Okay? I've sold goods for $500, but I have not gotten paid. Okay? In our books, we have to set up a receivable. That receivable is going to show us that you owe me money. Okay? So an accounts receivable is kind of like an IOU, but we need to record it so we can keep track of who owes us money so we can collect. Okay? So an accounts receivable is an asset because it's a promise of someone else paying us for goods or services that has been provided to them on account okay so accounts receivable is an asset to the company okay now liabilities liabilities are anything that we the business owe to another entity okay so if we buy something on account or um, in this case it could be referred to as debt that is a liability so if we owe money to someone we buy something let's say we're buying a piece of equipment we don't have the money we go to the company and they say, okay, we can finance it for you for five years if you pay me $500 a month, okay? I owe that piece of equipment. I have a liability to pay it, okay? So if I need to pay someone else for it, uh, for either a good or a service, it becomes a liability, okay? This could be to outside parties or it could be internal. Okay? Sometimes our employees perform tasks because they work all week, you know, um, at the end of the week, we are expected to pay them their salaries, okay? So, we, we, it could be money that we owe to vendors, it could be uh, money that we owe to a bank, it could be money that we owe to our employees. Any money that is owed to someone else becomes a liability. Now, liabilities are very easy to identify because usually they end with the word payable, meaning we need to pay someone. It's payable. Some examples of liabilities include accounts payable, notes payable, salaries and wages payable, income tax payable, interest payable, or other accrued expense payable. So whenever you see the word payable, 
it means it's a liability it means we owe someone money okay now the last one we have is owner's equity okay the equity basically tells us how much value is left over once we have totaled up everything valuable that we have which is our assets and we subtract everything that we owe which is our liabilities okay um, that represents the amount uh, by which the assets exceed the liability becomes our equity okay so the equity is the excess of the assets and the liabilities anything that we have left over is our equity okay some items that fall under the equity section are common stock preferred stock capital and retained earnings okay and we're going to go through these a lot more in detail um, this chapter and in our next chapter this is just a high level um, summary of what each of these components are it's very important that you understand that an asset is anything that you own a liability is anything that you owe okay and equity is the difference between what you own and what you owe okay and once again this is our accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus our equity okay the accounting equation must always remain in balance the left hand side must equal the right hand side so both sides must always equal or must always balance okay accounting is a balancing act debits must equal credits the assets must equal the liabilities plus equity okay and we'll we'll see have this illustrated in our example that we're going to be uh, that i'm going to be demonstrating to you in a bit okay so this is just some general information please make sure that you do read chapter two in full that way you have a general understanding of what i'm speaking about because if you have not read then this is probably chinese to you okay so make sure that you read before you attempt any of your assignments okay now i am going to go over the problem that we're going to be completing okay so we're doing exercise 24a now this problem can be found in the end of your chapter two um, you'll have a lot of problems at the end of the chapter um, so if you want to reference this from your textbook, just go to and find exercise 24A. It is required that you have this information in front of you so you can be able to follow along. So at this point in time, I want to encourage to either you log in to Blackboard and pull up this problem in your computer or you take a picture of it with your phone. That way you have the information as I go through it. I cannot keep the information up here because I will be solving the problem in the next tab. Just make sure that you do have um, this information available to you so you can be able to um, follow along as I'm completing the problem. Now, this is exercise 248, and I like this problem because it integrates various components. It integrates the analysis of transactions. We're going to analyze a variety of transactions. Uh, we're also going to post these transactions into the expanded accounting equation. Okay, so let's read the problem. This exercise is an extension of exercise 23A. Okay, so we've already started, you know, this is assuming that we have completed 23A. I'm not gonna go over 23A here, I'm focusing on 24A. Okay, um, we do need the beginning balances, which I will provide, and then we'll move from there. Okay, so it says here, let's assume John Sullivan completed the following additional transactions during February. Show the effect of each transaction on the basic elements of the expanded accounting equation. And the expanded accounting equation is your assets equals your liabilities plus your owner's equity. Now, under your owner's equity, there's various components that fall under that. We have capital, drawing, revenues, and expenses. So capital gets added, drawing gets deducted, revenue gets added, expenses get deducted. So this is the expanded accounting equation. So we're going to basically plug in all of these transactions into this equation. Okay. After transaction K, report the totals for each element. Demonstrate that the accounting equation has remained in balance. Remember, the accounting equation is assets equals liability plus owner's equity. We must balance. The left-hand side must equal the right-hand side of the equation at all times. If it does not, then we did something wrong. We need to figure out what we did wrong, and we need to fix it. Okay. So at this point, uh, please ensure to pull up exercise 24A, um, either in your electronic book, or just take a picture of this screen with your phone so you can have it handy. Okay. 
So I'm gonna move over. Um, I created this little Excel template that way I can demonstrate how to complete this for you. Yeah. These are the different letters of the transactions that we're doing. Each transaction has a letter identified. Now the problem said that this was a continuation of problem 23A. I'm not gonna go over problem 23A with you. It's very similar to this. Um, but I did solve it on my own and I'm bringing over the balances. So this information that you have here, I provided it to you because I've already completed problem 23A. This is gonna be our starting point, okay? We are continuing, they're asking us to continue to add to what we had previously done in exercise 23A. So now we're gonna start with letter E, okay? Letter E, let's see what letter E says. Letter E says, we received cash from a client for professional services. 1500 so what are they telling us here okay we perform some kind of a service and the customer paid us fifteen hundred dollars okay so what accounts does this transaction affect and this is where you're gonna have to do a lot of uh, talking to yourself okay I do a lot of this people might think you're crazy but this is how I can be able to picture what is going on okay? so it says you received cash what did you receive cash for what did you receive the cash? Well, you provided some kind of professional service. You provide a service and they gave you cash of $1,500. So now we have to record that transaction. Well, what account does that transaction affect? Well, the transaction said that you received cash. So because you received cash, do you have more or less cash? Okay, you have more cash. So I'm gonna add $1,500 to my assets because I know that cash is an asset. Okay. Now, what did I have to do to get these $1,500? I had to provide a service, okay? Anytime you provide a service, that goes under your revenues. You generated money because of the services that you provide. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put 1,500 here. If you can see, the left-hand side increased by 1,500 the right hand side increased by 1500. Both of my uh, sides of the equation were affected by the same amount, okay? Here I'm just gonna put a short description. These are service fees. Okay. Letter F, you paid your office rent for the month of February, $600. So you're renting the place for $600. So now you had to pay six hundred dollars okay so what happens when you pay the rent do you have more money or less money okay. in my world when you pay money your cash goes down okay so I am paying my rent of six hundred dollars I am putting it in parentheses because that shows that my cash is decreasing okay it's decreasing by six hundred dollars okay now what did you have to pay you had to pay your rent. The rent is an expense, okay, of $600. Now, on this side, I am not putting it in parentheses. Why not? I am not putting it in parentheses because my transaction already has a minus sign, okay? So, my equation already has a minus 600. So there is no need for me to put it in parentheses because the equation itself has the minus sign right here. Okay. So I deduct $600 of my cash to pay my rent, which is an expense of $600. Okay. So here I'm going to just put rent expense. That way I know that I paid the rent. Okay. Letter G. You paid your phone bill of $64. Okay. So anytime you pay something, you're paying with cash. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we're paying the phone bill $64, okay? So once again, my cash is gonna be reduced because we are making a payment. And your telephone is an expense, okay? So I'm gonna put $64, and once again, I don't have to enter minus because the equation already has the minus sign, okay? So this is my phone expense. 
to save this. I don't want to lose it. Okay. My next transaction, you withdrew cash for personal use. So you have a business and now you need some money for, you know, to pay your own rent or whatever the case might be. So you're making a withdrawal from the company okay, for a thousand dollars. Okay. So you are taking out money from the company. Okay. So you withdrew cash. Because you withdrew cash, do you have more or less cash? Well, anytime you make a withdrawal, that means you have less. Okay? So I have $1,000 less in my bank account. Okay? Now what happens? Well, you made a withdrawal. So you're going to look for where, do, where does withdrawals go? Well, we have a category for drawing. Anytime that any of the business owners makes a withdrawal from the business, we keep track of it under the drawing account, okay? Now let's say, for example, we have three different owners. We have Pedro, we have Pablo, and we have Maria, okay? So we're gonna have an account for Pedro drawing, Pablo drawing, and Maria drawing. We're gonna have three different accounts under this category so we can keep track of how much money each of the partners is withdrawing from the business, okay? So in this case, we had a withdrawal of $1,000. And if you notice, I did not put a minus sign once again because the minus is already included in the accounting equation, okay? So I don't have to do that because it's already in there, okay? Letter I. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put my description here. So I'm going to just put, uh, uh, we withdrew, okay? Withdraw, withdraw personal use, okay? Letter um, I. So you perform services for clients on account, $750, okay? So what does this tell me? This tells me that I went out there, I performed a job, I completed a service, and I billed them $750. Okay. The client agreed that, you know what, I don't have the money right now, I'll pay you next week. Okay. So we agreed that the customer was gonna pay me at a later time. So the services were performed on account. I'm going to get this money later. Okay. So did you receive any cash today? No. Someone owes you money. Someone owes you $750. So, if someone owes you $750, what account would you use? You would be using your account receivable, which is an asset, okay? But just so you know, what account would you use? The account that you would use would be account receivable. So, I am increasing my asset by $750 because someone owes me $750, okay? So I am expecting someone to pay me at a future point in time, $750, okay? So now, what did I do to set up this receivable of $750? Well, I performed a service, okay? So anytime you perform a service, that is a revenue. You went out there and you worked, and now you are getting paid for that, okay? So we have $750 under revenues. There we go. So remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation must be done to the other side. Okay. Letter J. You paid wages to your part-time employees, $1,200. So you're running payroll and you're paying your employees $1,200. Okay. So what's going to happen? Well, my cash is going to decrease because um, I'm getting money out of the bank to pay my employees, okay? My employees are an expense to my company, okay? I have to pay them so we can get things done, so they become an expense, okay? So we have wages expense or salaries expense, depending on what is it that it is, but any of the wages or salaries goes under expenses, okay? will be $1,200, and once again, it already has a minus sign because of the formula, okay? Wages expense. Okay, the last item we have 
which is letter K, is you receive cash for services performed on account in transaction I. So let's look at transaction I. It says here that you perform services for $750, and now you're getting cash, but you're not getting cash for the full amount. You're getting only $400 of the $750, okay? So you are receiving cash. So what happens here? Okay? This is where it can get a little bit confusing, okay? And I'm going to uh, write right here on the side, okay? Cash is an asset, okay? Accounts receivable is an asset. Okay. Now, when we reported this transaction, we performed services for clients on account 750. Well, what did we do? And I'm going to put it here in. Uh, okay, well, no, I'm going to just go ahead and show you. So, what we did here, letter I, let's go back to letter I. We debited $750 under accounts receivable and we credited the revenue, okay? Or we recorded the revenue account. So the revenue has already been recorded. Okay? So we don't have to worry about that because we've already acknowledged that we provided a service of $750. Now, what we have over here is an IOU. What this means is someone owes me money, okay? So now what's going to happen in this transaction is Someone owes you $750, okay? Well, they just made you a $400 payment. You received cash of $400 for the services that were performed in transaction I, okay? So what are you receiving? You are receiving cash of $400. So your cash is going to increase $400, but guess what? Your receivable that you have here, okay? This is your, uh, let me put a note here, insert comments. This is accounts receivable, okay? okay? So your accounts receivable, you have in your books in your accounts receivable that someone owes you 750. They just made you a payment of 400. So now we're gonna decrease your accounts receivable, okay? You're going to decrease your accounts receivable by $400. So what this means is that you had $750, okay? And initially you had recorded a receivable of $750. They just made a payment of $400. So that means four, five, six, seven. That means that they now owe you $350. Okay, so letter I, you recorded 750 receivable. Letter K, you recorded a payment of $400. So that means that your balance that is owed on that receivable is now 350. Now you don't record this anywhere, anywhere. That's just for you to know, okay, they owed me 750, but then they made me a payment of 400. That means I still need to collect an additional 350. Okay, so what happened here is your cash increased by 400, your asset accounts receivable decreased by 400. So if you notice, both of the transactions were on the asset side of the equation, okay? We have one positive and one negative, okay? So in reality, this transaction nets to zero, okay? But this transaction does need to be recorded because one transaction affects cash, the second transaction affects your accounts receivable, okay? Now, those are all of the transactions that we have. The next thing that we need to do is we need to total each of our columns, okay? Let me see if I can do this fast here in my computer, okay? So, I'm just gonna get the total of each of my columns, Okay. okay, and then it's going to be equals plus, minus, plus, minus. That is the final accounting equation that we have. Okay. Now, we need to make sure that our assets 
actually does equal our liabilities and our owner's equity. We need to prove that the accounting equation has remained in balance. Okay? So to do that, what I went ahead and did, I went ahead and I created two sides. One side is my assets, my other side is my liabilities and my owner's equity. They need to total. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down the information. My assets equal 31,586. My liabilities is 5,200. My capital is 27,000. My drawing is 1,000. You know it's minus because it has a minus in front of it. Your revenues is positive 2250. Your expenses is minus 1864. Now remember to put the drawing and the expenses in minus or in parentheses. Okay, these are deductions to your owner's equity. Okay, a lot of students forget that step and then they don't balance. Okay, now I can just add up all of this information and let's see what we get. Voila. We are in balance. My assets equal my liabilities and owner's equity. Okay, so what that tells me is that my information was posted correctly. You know, this does not guarantee that you posted it to the right account, but it does guarantee that your equation has remained in balance. Okay, so this is a good way of identifying that you're on the right track. Okay. So this is how you complete this particular problem. Okay? You have something similar to this in your homework. Okay? Make sure that you practice it, and if you have any questions, you let me know. Okay? Thank you very much.